Hi, beloved. Welcome to this video. And thank you, as always, for checking in for these few moments. It's Tuesday morning, June 4th, as I'm recording this. And if you were with us this last Sunday, you know that we began a brief series uh, through the month of June on biblical stewardship, treasures, and giving. And we began to look at Matthew chapter 6. We looked specifically at verses 19 to 24. And this coming Lord's Day, we're going to look at the remainder of the chapter, verses 25 to 34, on the matter of laying up treasures in heaven. And this is one of the places where Jesus directly speaks about money and wealth and treasure and our hearts with regard to those realities. And we saw that he makes the point ultimately in verses 19 to 24 that we are to treasure God alone in heaven and not treasure the things on this earth. He makes that very direct command in verses 19 to 21 when he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we are to trust and to treasure only God in heaven and not things on this earth, because that is where he wants our heart to be, because only God is worthy to be trusted. And as we saw in what Jesus argues for, the logic of his commandment and his exhortation and his encouragement is because the things of this earth are fragile and temporary, whereas God and the things of heaven are secure and eternal. And so we are to put our hope and our trust and our treasure there. Now, we understand on a daily basis this is a battle of faith because our own indwelling sin, the inclinations of our heart and our attention, uh, the world around us and Satan and all of his temptations are continually seeking to draw our hearts to the things of this world and to trust and to treasure the things of earth rather than trusting and treasuring God. And I just want to encourage you with a number of passages that really help us in this fight if we would own them and take them to heart. Uh, one of those is in Psalm 73, and we read this passage earlier in the service this last Lord's Day before uh, the sermon. Psalm 73, where the writer is wrestling with what he sees as the prosperity of the wicked. And he goes before God in prayer, and he lays his bitter and vexed soul before the Lord. And as he is drawn to the realities of who God is and all that God has revealed and promised and declared, uh, the Lord grants him peace and, and calmness and contentment. And that gets expressed more fully near the end of the psalm. And listen to what the psalmist says in verses 23 to 25. He says, Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth, earth that I desire besides you. And that entire psalm is instructive of, of how to be seeking the Lord and finding him continually uh, to be our treasure rather than looking to the things on this earth. It is a battle of faith, and God seeks to help us by his word to fight that fight of faith. A few other passages that help us in this way, among so many that we could point to in Scripture, uh, one of them is Psalm 23, where David, of course, gives that wonderful declaration and testimony at the beginning of the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a declaration of contentment in God, the shepherd king who owns us, who cares for us, and who provides for us. And of course, through the rest of Psalm 23, David describes the rich and the wonderful and the faithful ways that God cares for his soul. Another psalm that can help us in this battle is Psalm 103, where David begins that psalm by saying in verses 1 and 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And again, through the rest of the psalms, he, psalm, he speaks of the benefits that God has given to those who belong to him. 
And so that's a psalm that can greatly help us. Another psalm is Psalm 145, where David begins this psalm by saying, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. And again, in that psalm, he goes on to then recount the unsearchable greatness of God in the unsearchable greatness of his glory and his grace and his goodness and his love and his faithfulness. And in all of these and many other psalms, David and the other psalm writers are looking to God. They're trusting in God. They know that God and God alone is is worthy to be trusted and to be treasured. And so these psalms can help us greatly. I want to point you to a couple of other New Testament passages that also help us greatly in this fight of faith uh, to trust and to treasure only God in heaven. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, listen to what Timothy is exhorted by Paul at the very end of the book in verses 17 to 19. The Apostle Paul says this to Timothy, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. And you see how he's even borrowing language from what Jesus says in Matthew 6 about storing up treasure for ourselves as we trust in the Lord and not in riches. One other passage, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hear these words, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Again, more promises, more exhortations that we are to trust and to treasure God alone in heaven and not the things of this earth. Because you see, the danger of all of the things of this earth, money and all the things that money can buy, is that we foolishly think that we're going to be helped, that we're going to find security, that we're going to find life and hope in riches and all that money can buy. And that's simply a lie. We are to find our hope in God alone. There's actually one other passage I want to direct your attention to that Uh, speaks to these matters and that helps us. It's Proverbs chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. Uh, Listen to these words, Proverbs 18, verses 10 and 11. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous man runs into it and is safe. A rich man's wealth is his strong city, and like a high wall in his imagination. What a contrast. We're being exhorted to the reality that it's the name of the Lord. It's God himself in the fullness of all that he is and who he is and all that he's given and revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ultimately, he's a strong tower and the righteous man runs into him and is safe. But in contrast to that, a rich man's wealth is his strong city and like a high wall in his imagination. It's a mirage. It's a, it's a lie. He thinks in his imagination that he's safe and that, that he's got strength and security because he's trusting in riches, but it's only in his imagination. It's only in the Lord that we find our strength and our security. So all of these truths and many others are, are means of helping to encourage us to fight this fight of faith because it is a daily battle, and we all know and we understand that. So I want to encourage you to be fighting that battle, to be laying up treasures in heaven, treasuring only God in heaven and not things on this earth. And this coming Lord's Day, we're going to continue in Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34, and look more, more fully at how Jesus then amplifies on that exhortation in helping us understand what it means to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And so I hope you'll be with us this coming Lord's Day. Uh, In addition to that, focus during our worship service in Equipping Hour, we'll be continuing in our series with Heaven and Hell. 
And then we'll be meeting in the evening in community groups. And so we encourage you, of course, as always, to be a part of all of those gatherings and to be uh, sharing in what the Lord has for us. Well, thanks again for checking in with this video. May you know God's blessings in fullest measure as you would treasure Him and Him alone. God's blessings to you, and we'll Lord willing see you this Sunday. Bye-bye.